Okay, this is English 201, week two, part two. Um, so no pain, no gain sounds true because it has rhythm and rhyme. So let's talk a little bit more detail uh, about how this kind of thing works. Um, okay, so let's take a look at a, a little bit of this poem here. Um, this is a this is a poem you don't know, but it's a poem. Had we but had we but world enough and time, this coyness lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. This is the beginning of a longer poem. Um, by the way, not important at all that you understand any of this. I just want you to notice, see the word time? I wrote an A out to the side. Every time I see something that rhymes with that, I'm going to put another A. Um, so let's take a look at how that works. And I, I, I'm, I assume you guys know what a rhyme is, right? That, that, that time rhymes with crime. Way rhymes with day. This is this is not complex. I assume you already know how to do that. Had we but world enough in time, time is an A. This coyness lady were no crime. I'm gonna put an A by, I'm, and I just picked these, these are just made up. I just picked an, I just chose A's and B's. I could have done something else, symbols or whatever, but A's and B's. So let's say time, I wrote an A off to the side. Anything that rhymes with time, I'm gonna put an A off to the side of that. So since crime rhymes with time, I'm putting an AA. -A. Then I'm gonna put we would sit down and think which way. Does way rhyme with, with crime? No, so I'm not gonna put an A. But way is a totally different word, so I'm gonna put a B. Now, if I see something else uh, that rhymes with way, I'm gonna put a B. Um, so you can see we've got a pattern going, right? Time, crime, way, day. That's A, A, B, B. You start to get a pattern, right? Um, so, and, 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 I'll, and, and once you get a pattern started in a poem like this, um, it's so time, crime, way, day. Um, once you get a pattern like that, A, A, B, B, you start to, it's going to probably, there's a good chance in older poems, especially that it's going to keep going. Uh, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, right? So that you get, so the, and then you're like, oh, I get the pattern. The rhyme, the rhymes line, the lines rhyme in pairs. Um, so let's take a look at this. So we can, and we can do it again here. Um, so this is the, the, how do we have a world enough in time? That's an A. This coyness lady were no crime, A. We would sit down and think which way, B, to walk and pass our long love's day, B. Fine. So here's, the, the poem keeps going. So let's keep going with this. Thou by the Indian Ganges side shouldst rubies find, I by the tide of Humber would complain. I would love you 10 years before the flood. So you can see side tide, that rhymes. Nice and easy. Cool. So we, we got a pattern in this poem. A, A, B, B, C, C. Then we hit a little bit of a problem. I realize you guys are probably bored. Um, this is now going to get more interesting. Wood and flood. Well, we had a pattern going here. Um, obviously, that we had AABB. Now we've got CC because side and tide rhyme. But here's a question. Do wood and flood rhyme? Um, it's tricky. For starters, a lot of my students, their immediate instinct is no. Wood and flood do not rhyme. Um, but there's a couple of things we should think about. Number one, uh, this is written in England and people have accents. So maybe f wood and flood rhyme if you have a British accent. So there's something there. Um, notice also, mm, ah, coffee, okay. Um, so wood and, fly, wood, wood and flood might rhyme if you had a British accent. So there's that. Also notice that wood and flood are like, sort of close. It's not like wood and gefilte fish. Uh, wood and gefilte fish don't rhyme at all. But wood, flood, wood, flood. They're kind of close, actually. Um, and of course, why am I having this? Why am I thinking about this at all? Because I expect it to run. Because the poem was going A, A, B, B, C, C, D, E. But if you look closely at it, I might go, wait a minute. Wood and if I, if the pattern is the the lines are rhyming in pairs and I get wood and flood maybe I should stop for a second and think about does this rhyme, um, but accents can be a big tricky part of it. Um, uh, for example, um, I don't know if you guys know Winnie the Pooh, but in Winnie the Pooh, um, there's a bunch of characters in Winnie the Pooh. Pooh, you got um, Kanga and Roo. Why are they called Kanga and Roo? Because of kangaroos. Um, there's uh, Tigger. Why is he called Tigger? Because he's a tiger. Um, there's Piglet. Why is he called Piglet? Because he's a little pig. 
And my students are rolling their eyes like, this is stupid, professor. This is so obvious. I did not come to college to learn this. Why is Eeyore called Eeyore? And for a, a lot of Americans don't know why Eeyore is called Eeyore. Uh, by the way, Winnie the Pooh is British. Um, so a lot of people don't know why Eeyore is called Eeyore. Um, and I'm going to let you know a little secret. Uh, in There are areas in England where the British accent, you drop the R. You don't say the letter R. So where an American would say governor, right? The Cuomo is the governor of New York. British people would, some British people, not all of them, but a lot of British people would say governor. Oi, oi, how you doing today, governor? Governor. 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 Boy, oi, how you doing today, governor? Governor. Governor. They drop the R. So actually, as Americans, we are mispronouncing Eeyore's name. The R in Eeyore is silent. What is Eeyore's name? Eeyore, Eeyore, he's a donkey. Get it? So my point is, is that accents um, and the way words are pronounced. Um, it's not as simple. You can't always just tell from looking at a page whether two words rhyme. You got to think about because words get pronounced differently all over the world. Um, and also individual speakers will pronounce words in a different way. Um, so Bob Dylan, you probably don't know Bob Dylan, but Bob Dylan was an old musician in the 60s. Um, I fucking love Bob Dylan. Um, but Dylan had a funny, he, had, he just talked, he had not an accent. He wasn't, it wasn't like from an area. He just talked odd. He had an odd voice. And so he would, when he sang songs, if he was singing the song and that came up in a song, he would make them rhyme. He would say, wood, flood. Um, and the way he says it, it would rhyme. Um, Jay-Z has a song um, where he rhymes two words that do not seem like they would rhyme at all. Um, he rhymes the word audience with nonchalance. Nonchalance is like when you don't care about something. Um, but the way he pronounces it is audience, nonchalance, and he it it rhymes. It's cool. It's fun. Now a lot of my students will their their instinct here is that the poet couldn't find a word that rhymed and that they're cheating or that this is like a mistake or an error. It's not. It's fun um, because sometimes in a poem. Rhymes can be really obvious. Way, day, time, crime. Uh, and you're like, okay, I get it. That's obvious. Um, it gets boring when the rhymes are obvious. So if you put in an interesting rhyme, like wood and flood, um, it makes the poem more fun to listen to. Um, it's an interesting and surprising variation. Um, because if the rhymes are too regular, it starts to sound kind of annoying and predictable. For example, if you're listening to a rock song, and someone in the rock song says, baby, baby, you're my dove. It's a metaphor, because she's like a beautiful bird. Um, baby, baby, you're my dove. Like, I already know that the, he's going to use the word love in about five or six words, right? I mean, it's pretty easy. If, some, if somebody in a rock song says, baby, baby, you're my dove, he's going to say love in the next line. And that's boring. But see, when Jay-Z rhymes audience with nonchalance, I did not think he was going to do that. Um, Biggie Smalls has a song where he talks about all the cool shit he can buy with his money. He's like listing off things he can buy with his money. Um, and and he talk, he's talking about fancy uh, fancy food. Uh, he, he mentions um, in, in France, people eat snails uh, with butter for dinner. Um, it's like an appetizer. It's called escargot. Um, or es escargot, escargot. Uh, and Biggie Small says, uh, he's listing off all the fancy food and he goes, escargot, my car goes swiftly, 150. Like that's a fun rhyme. You just rhymed escargot with my car go swiftly, 150. Like that's, and you know, see swiftly, 50, they're close. They sort of rhyme. It's fun. Um, and so, so yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's basically what I want to tell you about rhyme, which is it doesn't have to always be the most obvious kinds of rhyme. Um, I'm going to give you a list of words here to take a look at. Um, like, do you see how these words sort of rhyme? I mean, they don't exactly rhyme, but they're close. Squeeze, sneeze, please, or tease, MCs, disease, degrees. Take a look at here. Dreams, fiend, machine, intervene, genes, scene, anything. Sort of, it's a little off. Look at these two words. This is an obvious one, right? You, if the students looking at the, the word presidents and residents will immediately go, they don't rhyme. This one ends in T-S, this one ends in C-E. But do you see how they sort of do rhyme? Presidents, residents. It's close. These words don't look close either. Verb, word. But do you see how they're sort of close? 
um, verb, word. Um, down here we have year, air. How about I am, Diane, again, him, pen, defend. They don't exactly rhyme, but do you see how it's not like gefilte fish? Um, after, right after this, this, I, this is a playlist of videos. In the next video, I'm going to put a rap song on. And uh, if you want to skip to the part, um, go to about a minute 45 into the song. I mean, you can listen to the whole song if you want to. But if you go to about a minute 45 into the song and listen to it for 60 seconds, um, you'll hear um, you'll hear the rapper use all of these words that are on this page right here um, in a really interesting way. Because it doesn't seem like from that list they would rhyme. But when you hear it in the song, it sounds Fucking great. So it's about a minute 45 into the next clip and you just have to listen for about 60 seconds. If you want to listen to the whole song, it's a really good song. Um, but, uh, uh, but it's about four minutes long. So, all right, and I'll see you in the next video.